the man walking down the street. Let me direct your attention to the man walking down the sidewalk. No, not that man. There, that's him, the man on the left. Notice his slowing movements. Not quite the same as he once was. He's aging, but still agile enough. He's a simple man. His clothes are unassuming, and he doesn't live beyond his means. He's scruffy-looking but well-kept. Just an ordinary gentleman moving about the world. Look closer at his body. The slope on his back. The stiffening of his fingers and some of the joints. His body has seen a lot. It's been through a lot. Years of his life's work has finally caught up with him. His body is starting to wear. He's enjoyed his life's work. He thinks of it more as a hobby, really. But carrying all those bodies draped over his back and cutting and ripping into flesh over the years is finally taking its toll. So take a close look at the aging, unassuming man. But don't get too close. He's a killer. Yes, he's older. Yes, he's not what he once was. But he's always looking to add to his count. Message from a Serial Killer First off, I apologize if this gets a little rambling. I'm dictating into a word processor. You can call me Carver. Not my real name, obviously. But ever since the media started calling me The Carver, I took a shining to it. I'm a pretty normal guy. I work a 9-to-5 job, live in an apartment. Single, but not bothered by it. I visit my parents fairly often, and I occasionally kill people. It started when I was a teenager. Walking home from school, I saw a man dressed in a business suit, standing in an alleyway, texting on his phone. A compulsion took over me, so I pulled out my pocket knife, snuck up behind him, and stabbed the sucker to death. Then, a random inspiration popped into my head, and I carved 1 Corinthians 15.22 into his chest. I honestly don't know why I kill. It's simply a compulsion, and it comes as easily as deciding to go see a movie or get a haircut. It doesn't affect me psychologically, and I still lead a normal social life. As for the carving... I hate to dispel the many theories, but they usually don't mean anything. I merely pick a symbol or something at random. Anyway, the reason I'm sending out this message, the last few killings that have rocked you all to the core, the ones with the mutilated faces and obscene language cut into the body, those are not my work. Someone is obviously trying to copy me, and doing a poor job of it, too. I intend to find this piggybacking freak and... Who's knocking this time of night? Hello? Ah! To whomever is reading, this is the real Carver. I have dealt with a nutcase that's been dictating... The crock of lies written above. You'll find his body at the corner of 15th and Elm, with copycat carved into his chest. Until next time. And I promise, there will be a next time. A Serial Killer's Thoughts Blood covers my clothes. He stood no chance. I killed Tony with three stabs to the neck, eight to the gut, and seventeen to the back. I think he put up a pretty good fight, to be honest. It's the first time I've seen my own blood 
in years. Hell, he was still alive after I cut him up pretty good. So I finished him off with a little curb stomp to the side of his head. Before he woke up, I had to cut his wife's throat when she was getting her snack from the kitchen. Then I got rid of the kids pretty easily. They were asleep, so it was no trouble. The master bedroom was unlocked, so I went into it and stumbled over some clothes, which woke the dad up. I should have been more careful, and I wouldn't have had to risk so much fighting him. I'm getting better at that, though. The last four families I've murdered, I've learned from, and I have made less mistakes over time. I don't know why I live like this, killing families and risking my own life. It just feels good. Every time I drag a blade across someone's throat, it's just a turn on, watching their blood spew out and them hold on wheezing for air. The father did make my night, though. I love a good fight for my victim. I love to break them down mentally first. Then when they are pissing themselves, I go in for the kill. It feels so good feeling their flesh pop open when I plunge my knife into them over and over. I've been stalking another family, the Jacobs, watching how they live and what their day-to-day -day schedule is. I think I'm going to wait until 10 a.m., and then I'm going to start killing them one by one. There's five of them, so this one should be a little bit more challenging. I think I'm also going to use a wood splitter axe I found in my shed just to make it a little harder for me. The slow swing and heavy power behind it should mean when I hit them in the head, it'll split open like a melon. I'm going to enjoy watching that. I gotta get cleaned up, though. So I'll talk to you all later. I'm a serial killer. The title says it all, really. I'm a murderer. I'm on 23 kills now, and it's becoming more frequent. My first was at 15, when some asshole claimed I fouled him in football, and I was kicked out of the game. I slit his throat that very night in his own bed. I was never caught, and it was a huge thing in our little town for years. I honestly thought nothing of it. No remorse, no fear of what I'd done. I was just a little surprised I actually went through with it. I wasn't even that angry at him but I still decided he deserved it. Perhaps I was just looking for an excuse to kill. My next was at 20, when my neighbor refused to return my hammer I'd let him borrow. This time, I used that very hammer to cave his skull in after I found it in his unlocked shed. Again, I wasn't caught, although I was questioned but I put up such a good act of shocked fear and sadness, I was able to walk free after an hour. That night I sat in my chair and thought about how I'd killed two people and felt no remorse, only pleasure. I made the decision in that moment that I was going to travel the country, maybe even the world, to find new victims. My killing became less random over time, I started stalking my prey. They were still total strangers, and unlike my first two victims, they had done nothing against me. They were just unlucky enough to be chosen. I usually follow them for about a week before I can no longer resist the urge. In fact, I've been watching you for a few days now, and I think tonight may be the night... I make 24 kills. I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to the special friends of the channel for your overwhelming generosity. If you would like to support the channel, the link is below 
in the description. Also, please send me your stories and poems to duchessofdarkness27 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at duchess.ofdarkness and Twitter at duchessofdark and two. I want to thank all my listeners for your kindness, your encouragement, and your support. It means the world to me. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.